It's Kelly Marie Alvarez here with a video for the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo Stamping Village event, which I am so excited about. And today we're going to be recreating a really cool interactive pull tab card by Grace from Lawn Fonts Design Team. This card is incredible, so let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be using a bunch of products from Lawn Fawn's fall and winter new release and we're mostly going to be stamping out images from Snow Much Fun but we're also going to be using a little bit from Den Suit Den and I love these stamp sets because they mix and match together so perfectly. Those bears are so cute and so we're going to start off by stamping out some of those images. I've got some Nina White Solar cardstock here. It's my favorite to stamp on for Copic coloring and we're going to be stamping in some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. Jet Black ink is a alcohol marker friendly ink. So we're going to stamp in that ink so that I can use my beloved Copic markers, which are my absolute favorite markers to use. Right here I have the stamp chamois and my stamp chamois case. I like the case because it keeps me from throwing the chamois on my project and getting my project all wet by mistake. And then I just go hop ahead and clean off my stamps right inside that stamp chamois case. Here you'll see that I'm stamping two of those kind of individual arms for the bear, and you'll see how we're gonna use those in just a little bit, but that's gonna be the interactive snow angel part of our card. Of course, stamping some cute little scarves. That first scarf is from Snow Much Fun, and the smaller scarf is from Den Sweet Den, and then stamping out that cute little tiny bear as well. My last thing is a little lamp from Den Sweet Den that we're gonna kind of put in our den later to add this cute little scene. Now here are my Copic markers and the way I like to use Copic markers is I always lay down my lightest marker first and there's two reasons for that. One, I feel like it kind of wets the paper and it makes my blending easier, but two, I lay down the lightest marker first to decide where all my shadows are going to go before I'm making the final decision with my darkest marker. So I put those in there I think, does that look nice? Okay, now I've brought in my darkest marker. Now in this case, I have that E35 marker there. I never ended up using it. My darkest one is actually the E34. Then you'll see here I'm blending with the E31 which is my medium and then we're going to take the E30 which is the lightest and then we're going to blend that out. Now one of the things I love that a lot of the girls on the Lawn Fawn design team do is they leave white spaces on the characters especially around their little bellies and I'm not used to doing that so this is kind of one of my first times practicing this idea. So you'll see I kind of created a circle there around his little belly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to look cute no matter what but to help that blend in we're going to be using a colorless blender in just a second now for his ears and nose we're using a pink but it's a pink in that brown family so it's nice and easily blended out with the e30 and then there's that colorless blender so we're going to blend out those edges of the belly so that it looks kind of like a little fuzzy belly now we're going to take this concept and repeat it on all of the bears. So I'm laying down that lightest marker, kind of giving myself a guide as to where that white belly is going to be and where my shadows are going to be. Now I'm laying down that E34 darkest marker, kind of creating a little curve around his neck and going around the edges of his body, blending out with my medium marker and then with my light. And you'll see there, I've kind of created a circular belly and I did a better job on that second guy. So I'm practicing, I'm learning, and now I have that cute little white belly in the center, I think is absolutely adorable. It really adds a lot to the critters. We have these really cute squirrels in a new stamp set called Let's Go Nuts. And those look really, really cute with the lighter little white belly as well. So here I go again, same idea. My lightest marker is kind of giving me a guide for the white belly and give me a guide for my shadows. And then I'm using my E34, the darkest and kind of just going around the edges and under where there might be shading so those creases of his legs and I'm going to go ahead and then blend it out with the medium once again kind of blending out to the curve around the neck and around those legs and then going in with my lightest marker to blend everything out and trying to maintain that cute little round belly. Eventually, these arms are going to be the left arm and the right arm of that standing bear. And so when I shade those in, I should have stamped them going in the opposite directions, but I didn't think about it at the time. So I'm going to shade at the bottom of one of the images and at the top of the other, because then that way the shading will be at the bottom of both the left and the right arm. That's a little confusing, but it's going to make sense once we die cut them and start to create the really cool interactive element. I really love this little guy with the paws because the coordinating die makes the paws so they can hold things. You can either use this guy on its own or you can layer it on top of the standing bear to give him arms that can hold something like a little heart or even that cute little tiny bear. It's really, really sweet. So you'll have to check out the Lawn Fawn blog and the Lawn Fawn site, lawnfawn.com, to see some really, really cute ideas with this Snow Much Fun stamp set.
So there we go, blending that guy in the same exact way. And then we're going to do our little guy here. Now for the guy with the arms up top and this little guy, I'm not really going to do a white belly since their belly isn't showing. But for this little guy, I am going to create kind of a lighter section towards the middle just so he kind of matches the other guy. So you'll see it's not completely white, but it's a little bit lighter there in the center. Next up, we're going to give him a rainbow scarf. And this is so much fun to do. Just pick out some really cute rainbow colored markers and just make tiny little stripes back and forth. And it gives that scarf just this extra fun added element. And once you layer onto the card, it's just this great pop of color. So we're gonna do the colored rainbow stripes here on the larger scarf. And on the smaller one, I'm just going with some like kind of purpley blue and then a pinky red just for those little stripes, which I think is really cute. And then for the lampshade, we're going to be using a YG00 really light yellow marker so that it looks like there's a yellow lamp glow coming through a white lampshade. And last but not least, we're going to add some rosy cheeks to those bears with an R30 marker. These are the coordinating dies for those two stamp sets, and those are those two special arms that I told you about. And what's special about them is the die has a little X. Now that X is the top of the arm. Remember how we shaded the dark and the light? So the top of the arm is gonna be the lightest part, so I'm gonna make sure that X is at the top, and then I'm gonna line it up with that stamped image, and then we're gonna hold it in place with some low-tack tape. I'm using some post-it note tape here. Then we're going to run all those little guys through the die cut machine and I love popping them out of the dies. Like how cute is that? Now we're going to run that second arm through. So I'm making sure that that X is at the top where the lightest part of my coloring is. I'm lining it up with that stamped image, holding it in place with the low tack tape, running it through the die cut machine. And now I've got the rest of my images, including those cool arms that are going to give us our interactive pull tab element. We're going to put these stamped images aside and now work on the card base and we're going to be making a slimline card. So this is the large slimline dies. It's got this awesome stitch detail and it's three and a half by eight and a half inches. And I love this size because you can easily mail it with standard postage in a business size envelope, but it's totally different and gives you this really cool, huge area to create a scene. Now to create our sky, we're going to be using some Distress Oxide inks, and I absolutely love these inks. We're using Tumbled Glass and Stormy Sky, and I'm building up the color with a blender brush. I'm just dipping the blender brush into that ink pad and then kind of going around in little circles starting off of the paper and then going onto it to build up that sky. Once I have a layer of the tumbled glass on there, I'm gonna to go to the stormy sky and the mix of these two colors is so gorgeous. And so that's just gonna go on the very outside edges. So the darker blue will blend into the lighter blue. And then I'm bringing in that lighter blue color to blend between the two of them just to create more of a seamless blend. And then here I'm just making sure that I'm going low enough in this sky. This is the new Snowy Sky Stencil, and I love this. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And so I'm gonna use the bottom part of it where there's less concentrated dots, and I'm using some Yeti ink, and this is a white pigment ink, and I'm picking it up with that blender brush, and then going ahead and layering it over the stencil. And this is gonna create a really cool snowy look that's gonna layer over that Distress Oxide ink. So there you can see how pretty those little snowflakes look. I wanted it to be really subtle, so I didn't put that much ink down. Going back, I wish I had put a little bit more because it kind of sunk into the paper a little bit as it dried. So definitely when you do this layer on that ink because it's going to look beautiful and when it dries it's going to look just a little bit lighter. Now here are some more slimline dies. So we have that large slimline and we have the new forest border and the stitched hillsides. And so we're going to be using these on all of these different pieces. So here we've got some large slimline pieces cut and then we've die cut this one with the forest border. And I love this little forest border. Now we're going to be adding some color to this with some Copic markers. So I've got some YG markers, yellow green markers, and then for the trunk, a nice light brown. So I'm just going to go through all of these and just color in that trunk quickly. And then we're going to be coloring each of the trees. So the first tree, I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. So we're going to add our darkest color here and then our medium. And then we'll blend out into the light. Now the trick for this is at the very top of these trees, we're going to leave it white. And that's going to look like snow. And then later we're going to add some glitter to it. And it's such a pretty look. I love how Grace did this. I thought it was so gorgeous. So to make this go a little bit quicker as I color in all these teeny tiny trees is I'm going to do all of my darkest marker first. So I'm going to layer all of them onto the trees. 
then go back through the medium and then through the light. Once again, leaving the tops of the trees with a little bit of white. Now that white area doesn't have to be consistent because it's snow that's fallen, right? So there'll be more or less snow on some of the trees and that's okay. You can make it really messy and that's actually how these really look the best. So there we're finishing up that lightest marker and how gorgeous is that? Oh, I love it. Next up, we're going to be taking these Snow Angel coordinating dies from the Snow Much Fun stamp set. And we're actually just gonna die cut these without the stamp, and you'll, you'll see why in a second. Now this middle one, I'm lining it up so that it lines up with that middle tree at the very peak of the hill. And then for the little ones, they're gonna go on either side. And there's a reason for that, because that's where our pull tab's gonna be, and I wanted to make sure it was the biggest area on my hill. And so I wanted it to line up with the peak of the hill. So now we've cut one of the small angels and now the second snow angel. We're going to cut a hill for the center here. So we're using one of those stitch till side borders on the slim line size. And then we're going to layer that hill over in just a little bit. And we want to make sure that we die cut a stitch den out of this. So I love these den shapes. It's cute for the bears, but honestly for any scene, it's just a cool shape. It's not just plain like a circle or an oval. It's just kind of a cool little shape. So we've die cut that out of the hill and we're going to have some of our bears hanging out in that cute little stitch den later on. Now here is some Moonstone cardstock, which is a really, really pretty blue color. And we die cut that same large slim line die from it. Here is one of those stitch till side borders and that curve is going to match up with the curve of that forest border. So all of the curves mix and match. So I'm just using that forest border there as kind of a guide as to where I'm going to place my stitched hillside. Once I have that, I can layer that onto that piece of cardstock, hold it in place with some of that post-it note tape and then run it through the die cut machine. And that's going to give me a hill that's going to match behind perfectly. So you'll see there that now we're just going to layer in those snow angels with that beautiful blue cardstock. We're going to be doing some heat embossing. So I'm taking out my anti-static powder tool and I'm going to run that across my blue cardstock. And then we're going to layer this piece behind. So we're going to be using that piece that we cut the snow angels out of. We're going to use that almost like a little stencil guide. So I'm going to layer these two pieces together and use some of that post-it note tape to hold them perfectly in place. Then we're going to be stamping in some clear embossing ink. And this is a nice sticky ink that we're going to be using with some white heat embossing powder. So there's my clear ink and my cute little snow angel. And now that top piece is going to serve as a guide as to where I'm going to stamp these snow angels. And it seems kind of backwards to do it this way, but this is how we're going to get everything to line up for this interactive element. So now we're gonna stamp the little tiny snow angels and then we can remove that top piece that served as our guide as to where we were gonna stamp. And then we can add some white heat embossing powder. I like to keep it in these little Tupperware tins and then spoon it over with just a plastic spoon. Now you're gonna see a little mistake that I made. It looks like some of that post-it note tape must have left a little bit of stickiness onto my cardstock, but that's okay. I'm gonna take a dry paintbrush and I can just go ahead and kind of scoop off any of that extra. So you'll see I'm just kind of almost painting it away, taking it off of there, and that's gonna fix it and have it be just perfect. So I'm just taking off any excess little embossing powder pieces and then I can go ahead and take out my heat tool and heat these guys up. I just love how these look when it's so bright shiny and white. It's so pretty. Ah, just gorgeous. So next up, we need to create the background for that little den that we cut earlier. So we're gonna use this same exact Moonstone cardstock. I had a little bit of extra from that die cutting that we did, and I'm just using my scissors just to trim it really quickly since no one's ever gonna see if it's all messy in the background. Then to make it look a little bit different than our other snow angel piece, we're gonna add some ink with Distress Oxides. I love using these Distress Oxides on top of L'Enfant's color cardstock. It looks absolutely incredible. So we're gonna be using this Twisted Citron and it's gonna become the glow of the lamp. So we're just gonna kinda of go in little circles and build up the color on the cardstock. And because it's an oxide ink, it's kind of sitting on top of the cardstock and it's such a cool look. Now here I've got my little den and I'm kind of checking to see where the glow is and I kind of wish I had had added just a little bit more when I saw the final card but it's okay I know that for next time but I think it looks really really cool and it just makes it look like this is maybe inside the house instead of a part of the snow 
Next up, we're going to be doing some stamping. And the Snow Much Fun stamp set has a bunch of different mix and match little elements to it. And what's really cool about the words in this stamp set and in most of Lawn Fawn's stamp sets is that all of the words have a nice straight edge on either side, which means you can line them up like a little puzzle piece. So those little pieces are just gonna line up together. The natural cling of the stamps are gonna help them stick together. And now I have the Love You Snow Much, which is such a cute phrase, with the snow having that little cursive. So I'm just kind of Butting those up against each other, letting them stick together, putting it in the placement I think will look nice. I'm chucking against my cute little trees there. Once I have it in the right placement, I'm going to lower the lid of my Misty tool and pick up that image. We're stamping this sentiment on that Distress Oxide and White Pigment Ink background we created earlier. So I'm gonna use some archival ink, which is gonna be really nice on top of this because it won't end up bleeding or smearing. So it's perfect to do on a really cool sky that we created here. So we're gonna go ahead and ink that up and stamp that there. And I just love how beautiful that sentiment looks in the upper right hand corner. Next, we'll add some tape runner to the back of that snow angel piece that we just heat embossed, and we're gonna layer that right on top of our sky. You can already see how cool it's gonna look with those trees layered over top. It was totally worth that extra effort of kind of lining everything up. How pretty is that? Now we're gonna work on the interactive element for this card, and we're gonna be using the waving pull tab starter set. We're gonna use the dies and that little stencil guide piece. And we're also gonna be using something from the coordinating die set for Snow Much Fun. So this little rectangular piece there. And yes, that's called a starter set, so that means that maybe one day there might be other stamp sets that work with it. But to make this cute little bear work, we're gonna use that rectangular piece included with the Snow Much Fun bear coordinating die set. We're gonna use this little tab piece and the stencil. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up this tab piece here right with the center of that snow angel. So we're going to take that metal bar and it's going to butt up right against the edge of our cardstock. So you'll see you've got the edge of the cardstock and then you've got that metal guide. And so they're going to line up right with each other and that's going to help you keep it straight. And then we're going to line up the center of that tab piece with the center of the snow angel and then hold it in place with some low tack tape. Then we're gonna take our stencil guide piece and we're gonna line it up with that curve and that's gonna tell us where to place this rectangle. We'll then line up that rectangular die with the bottom part of that stencil and that's gonna be in perfect placement inside of our snow angel. We can then use some low tack tape to hold that die in place. We'll remove that stencil guide piece, and then I'm just gonna add one more piece of tape just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then we're gonna go ahead and run that through our die cut machine. And then you'll see that we have a notch cut at the top. And we also have two slots cut in the snow angel there, and that's where the bear's arms are gonna go through. Before we move on to the next step of this interactive card, I remembered that I wanted to add some glitter to these pieces. And I wanna do it before we start the whole interactive element so that it's hopefully not too messy. So I'm gonna take a glue tube here and we're gonna line different parts of these pieces. So first of all, we're gonna line underneath those trees right at the top of the snow line. Then we're gonna take some chunky glitter and this stuff is gorgeous. And I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle it all over that glue line. Once we sprinkle it on top, all we have to do is just pat it with our fingers to make sure Sure that that glitter is nice and stuck to the glue and then we can tap off any of the excess. Then we're going to be repeating the same process with lots of other parts of these pieces. So the next thing we're going to do is remember those little white pieces that we left at the top of those trees? We're going to add some glue to, to the top of all of those, sprinkle on some glitter, and then once again pat it in and then tap off any of the excess. Then we're gonna do the same thing around the snow angels. And I really like it around the snow angels. Once, one, it's gonna highlight that die cut element, and two, the snow kind of piles up along the sides as you make a snow angel. So I kind of imagine it being that snow all piled up. So we'll line the snow angels and once again, sprinkle on the glitter. Now to make sure that our little den piece also matches our scene, we're gonna add some glitter to that snow bank as well. Now we're gonna add some foam tape to the back of our glitter piece. And I'm just putting a piece of scrap paper down just so I don't end up with more glitter all over my desk after cleaning up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take these foam squares and go all the way around, making sure to add a lot of support around those die cut openings. And then whenever I peel off the little backing of foam pieces, I like to have a little jar there, a little dish to just collect all my pieces and it keeps my craft desk from getting totally crazy while I'm crafting. So now we're gonna layer this on top and adding that foam is what looks makes it look really, really incredible 
incredible because once again, those snow angels look like they're really carved out of the snow. I just think it's so beautiful. Now that our piece is layered, we can start to work on the interactive element. And the first thing we need to do is cut off that tree at the top of the hill there, because it's gonna be right in the way of that pull tab. So we're just gonna cut that tree right off. And then we're gonna take those little bare arms. And you remember those little X's we had there? Those X's mark the top of the arm. So I'm gonna make sure that I have both of those X's at the top. Then I'll go ahead and die cut some of my pieces for the pull tab there. So we have the actual pull tab and then our stabilizer piece. Now on this pull tab, you'll notice that there's a score line right there. We're gonna make sure that we can see that score line and we're gonna take a little brad here and we're gonna put that right through so that the head of the brad is what we're looking at when we see the score line. Then we're gonna flip the whole thing over so that we're looking at the back side of the die cut and we're gonna take our bare arms, once again, making sure that that X is at the top, and we're gonna thread those holes there through that brad end. So we're looking at the back of the die cut, but at the front of the bare arm. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit closer so that you can see there we've got the X's at the top. That's gonna to make sure that we have our right and left arm correct. Then we're gonna just feed those little holes through, and then we can open up those brad prongs to secure it all in place. Next, we're gonna take our main card base, our main scene, and we're gonna flip that over so that we're looking at the back side of it. Once again, I'm putting a piece of paper down there to just capture any extra glitter. Now we're gonna take that piece and we're gonna flip it so that we're looking at the back of it, and then we're gonna thread those arms into those two slots that we created earlier. Then we'll make sure to center the pull tab in between those two slots, and we're gonna line up the top of the pull tab with the top of the card. Now next we're gonna work on the stabilizer piece. And when the die cuts the stabilizer piece, it creates two score lines for you. So you can see it right here with the die. And we're gonna be folding along those score lines. Once we fold along those score lines, we're gonna then be adding some adhesive in between the two score lines. So into kind of the middle rectangle that we create by folding them. So we're just gonna add some tape runner right into that middle section. Now the point of the stabilizer is to just hold that pull tab in place so that it doesn't wiggle back and forth and so that it doesn't move too far. So remember that score line that we looked at at the pull tab earlier? That's going to be our guide as to where to place our stabilizer. So once again, I'm making sure that my pull tab's in the center and that the top is lined up with the top of the card. And then I'm going to lay that stabilizer underneath and we're gonna be attaching that stabilizer to the card base. So there you'll see I'm lining up the stabilizer with that score line and I'm pressing down so that it's attached to the card base, not the pull tab. Then we're gonna add some adhesive to that smaller little piece there and just fold that over to secure it in place. Now you can see as we pull the pull tab, it keeps it straight up and down and from moving too far. Now we have a little bit of excess here of the tab and we just need to trim off whatever's extra. And then now it looks absolutely perfect and you can see the really cool action that those arms are making. Now here is a little pull tab piece that's included in the die set and I love that it has the arrow because that's gonna tell the recipient what they need to do. And we've cut that out of that same Moonstone cardstock that we used for the base there of those snow angels. And we're just gonna attach that right to the top of the pull tab. And now our interactive element is working, which is so cool. And all we actually need to do next is decorate. So right here we have those cute little bears that we colored at the beginning and I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of those bears and layer them into their snow angels. For the big bear, I'll take care to make sure that those foam squares are only down the center because we don't want them to be in the way of those moving arms. And then we can layer him right onto those arms and oh my gosh, look at this. How cute is that? I just can't take how adorable this is. So right now we're gonna add some of those other elements that we colored. So we're gonna add the rainbow scarf to this bear and I think it just oh, it makes the whole thing just shine. And add the other scarf to the other little bear. And we're gonna keep the guy on the right just plain. And we can layer the back piece for that den that we added that Distress Oxide Glow to onto the card base. And then we can start to work with our den piece. So here you can see we've got that den piece that's gonna layer right on top. And this is why I loved using this little tiny bear for this guy. So this guy's die actually cuts those arms. So you see how there's little slits there? Now we're gonna be able to hang the bear's arm over the edge of the den. And I think it's such a cute look. So he's just gonna go right on there, almost like a little 
little paper clip just like that. So you could have two arms out, but in this case, we're just going to do one arm. I think that looks really adorable. And so we'll just add some tape runner to the back there to help secure him. And then we're going to add another cute little bear. So there's kind of a little baby bear there inside with the big bear. And right here is when I realized that I kind of wanted the bear to the right side. So I went ahead and stamped a different bear. I love that there's a bear looking to the right and one to looking to the left. So we're going to take the guy that's looking to the left and layer him on instead. So that way then we'll have him there and then we can have our lamp to the right of him. And I think it's so cute because it looks like the bears may be whispering a little secret to mama or something. We'll then add some tape runner to the lamp and we're gonna layer the lamp directly onto the background and then we're gonna end up popping the bears in the den on top of that. And that's gonna give some nice dimension so that it looks like the lamp's kind of in the background causing that cool glow. So now we can add our foam squares all over the back of this piece and layer this on top. And there is a lot of foam on this card, but that's okay because it's what makes it look so special. This card is kind of a work of art. Grace did such an incredible job and it's so much fun to mix and match so many different elements for this card. So next we need to add this to our card base. Well, we're gonna add it on with foam tape. And the reason for that is, is the foam tape helps give it a little bit of height so that the pull tab mechanism works even better. So we're making sure to put a lot of foam squares around. I probably put too many foam squares. I kind of went a little foam crazy. You don't need this many, but you definitely want some just to the right and just to the left of that pull tab. And then here we have a slimline card base. It's three and a half by eight and a half inches. And we're gonna layer that whole piece on top with that foam tape. Then last but not least, well one, I had to play with the interactive element. And then I was looking at the card and I thought it just needed a little bit of something over to the right. And there's a really cute heart in this set. So I went ahead and stamped that out in some jet black ink, which is that Copic friendly ink. And we're just gonna color that in. Now I always stamp out a bunch of hearts just in case I make any kind of mistake, but I went ahead and used some markers that coordinated with the bear scarf there over to the left, just to kind of bring some of those pinky colors into the scene. Well then line up up the coordinating die and hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, add a little foam square piece, and then just add that right on top to that scene. And I think that pop of color over there just makes the whole card. Now, of course, a little more glitter. This is a glitter pen here, and I really love this pen because it has a bullet tip, so it's really easy to trace things. It's really great for things like sentiments. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trace that whole word snow just to add another little glittery element and make the fact that that's kind of cursive stand out even more. And here is a look at the final card in action. I think it's absolutely adorable. I love how Grace put the interactive element into this whole whole cute scene on this slimline card. We've got the little guys in the den and then everybody outside making their snow angels and having a ton of fun. The glitter makes it so special and sweet and I just had so much fun combining so many different die cuts and so many elements into one card. I love that you could take these ideas and then put them into a more simple card or make a big flashy card like this. I wanted to show you some other cute ways that aren't snow angels that people have been using this adorable bear. And here I love this card by Elise where he's working out with his dumbbells. Here Megan has him throwing up fall leaves into the air. I think it's absolutely adorable. And then this card by Grace is so clever. It's got a whole Pooh Bear theme where he's swatting away the flies and bees around the honey. Now these are really cute without the pull tab as well and this card by Audrey is so sweet and I love how she used that little guy but without an interactive element and then this card by Tammy is a slimline card in a portrait style also without using the interactive element so I love that you can use this with or without the interactive or think of cute and clever ways to use the interactive like working out or throwing up fall leaves or who knows what you could come up with. So make sure to share these amazing cards that you create with us. We can't wait to see them and thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.